let's talk about Arkansas because Sarah Huckabee Sanders has done something that is infuriating. And I know that's an evergreen way to begin any story. But here's the bottom line. Arkansas Republicans, Republicans run the state of Arkansas. Earlier this year, they passed a voucher program. And basically, there is a new document that came out this week that shows how thousands of students so far have spent millions of taxpayer dollars to attend mostly private religious schools. And making matters worse, a lot of those school, a lot of those students were already in private schools to begin with, which makes you wonder why they need taxpayer dollars to help them do the thing they were already doing without a problem. And the reason we know all this is because in Arkansas, I'm going to show you this document right here. Uh, they just issued something called the Education Freedom Account Annual Report. Okay. And basically, the way they passed this bill earlier, it was this voucher program. Um, but because of the way it's public, they have to document how much money is being spent, where all the money is going. That's what this document is. It's a document presented to the state legislature to say, hey, you know that bill you passed? Well, here's the initial report we have about where all the money is going and everything like that. So let me tell you what this document points out. What it shows, and this is the Sarah Huckabee Sanders endorsed version spin on this document. It says nearly 5,000 students at almost 100 schools have enrolled in the Education Freedom Account program, offering families across Arkansas the chance to choose the school that best suits their individual needs and helping every student have access to a high quality education. And look, if you don't know about vouchers, here's the idea. We will say, oh, you go to a crappy public school? Well, that's not fair. Why don't we give you some taxpayer money? It's available to you if you want it so that you can go to a private school or a charter school or a religious school of your choosing. And we will help pay the bill for tuition. And listen, there are a lot of critics, church state separation advocates, uh, education supporters, who are like, you're taking public money that ought to be going to improve public schools, and you're basically taking the money that would have gone to public schools and giving them to, one, private schools that don't need the money. They're supposed to be doing it on their own. That's the point. Or you're giving it to private religious schools, which should be funded by the churches. And why are we using taxpayer money for religious indoctrination? So vouchers are a problem for a bunch of reasons. But Republicans like it because they like to pretend the market can decide what the best schools are. And as long as we make that money available, schools will be better. And it never works. Like in practice, vouchers just make problems worse. But that's what Republicans love to do to pretend they're on the student's side. So let me show you this thing that is in this report. And I know this is a lot of numbers and it's kind of hard to see. But this is the first 24 schools participating in this EFA program. These are schools that are getting taxpayer money to welcome in students to their school because the state's now paying for tuition. And these are the first 24 schools. Just glance at this list. I'll try to make it a little bigger here for you. Just what do you notice about all these schools? They're all taken in hundreds of EFA participants. Yeah, look at that. Little Rock Christian Academy, Central Arkansas Christian School, Shiloh Christian School. This goes on for a Baptist Preparatory School, Christ the King School, Calvary. I'm not doing this for the... Oh, you get the point. That's just the first page. That's just the first page of the schools. So this is why one of the critics of the program... Uh, has said this is just a taxpayer-funded gift to religious schools. Like, if the idea of school choice was theoretically intended to help students at underperforming public schools attend institutions that give them a better shot, and it, even if those happen to be private schools, okay, we could be having a different conversation. But like I said, that's not what happens in practice. And not only is all this money going to private schools, as you saw from that list, 
it's mostly private religious schools. And here's the other thing that got a lot of people's attention. Uh, I will show you this chart right over here. Check this out. Of the people who are participating in the program, the 4,700 kids participating in the program, notice, and you could see this like in the box. I know my mouse arrow does not point there, but you could see in the box just above my head here, some of them are first-time kindergartners. These are students who might have gone to a public school in their area, but instead they're already being funneled into a private school, probably a private religious school at the taxpayer's dime. That's one thing. But the other thing to notice is look who else is on this list. These are, you could see scholarship recipients, special ed students, foster care students, so be it. But that means, here's the big takeaway, 95% of the students who are enrolled in the EFA program are students who either already attended a private school or they're beginning their educational career in one. And for the first case, that means their parents or their schools were already paying for tuition. They were already paying for education before this program went into effect, and they probably would have kept doing it if this program was not in effect. They don't need the money. They shouldn't need the money. And in the second case, like if they're kindergartners, why are taxpayers paying for them to go to religious schools? That's messed up. This is a massive taxpayer-funded gift to families whose kids were already going to private religious schools. And here's what you should know. So far this year, and the year just started a couple months ago, right? The school year, $7.1 million has already been spent on this program. And by the end of the year, according to this report, $32.5 million will be spent on this program. That covers tuition and other things like books, all that stuff. Um, this year, by the way, the program is only open to students at failing schools, students with disabilities, homeless students, foster care students, and first-time kindergartners. But as the law is written, in the years to come, uh, it's going to be open to anybody who wants to take advantage of it. That means there are going to be a lot of public school students who decide to leave public schools and they would not, the school districts would not get the money they would normally get for those students. And all of it would be siphoned off and shifted to a private school that already had money. That's why they were built that way. I mean, that in itself is messed up. More families that could already afford private schools are just going to be given more money while the public schools that remain suffer, while the students who don't go to a private school because their parents aren't interested or because they just don't have the resources to make that happen or their parents are not aware of this stuff, um, they're going to be making the public schools that exist arguably worse. And the state's not giving those schools the resources they need to do better. And like the thing is, this happens everywhere they institute voucher programs. Advocates always use the phrase school choice, which is on, the only kind of choice they ever support, because they know ultimately this is all a benefit for Christian schools, and they know it hurts public education, which is something they don't like either. Um, I should say there was a previous version of this program already in effect that only helped students with disabilities, foster children, military families, and honestly, all of that might be defensible. I want those kids to have a leg up and they need the help. This one is so much broader and so much worse. And it's also part of another bill which has a variety of problems of its own. Just to give you a hint, like the broader law that this EFA program is part of, uh, the Sarah Huckabee Sanders supporters would say it actually boosts the minimum salary for teachers from like $36,000, which is nothing, to $50,000. Like public school teachers now get paid minimum $50,000. And that sounds great. And I am all for that. The problem is the way public school teachers normally get paid is like you could, you'll get a chart. It says, this is how many year, uh, how many years of service you have. And this is your education level, formal education level. And you just figure out where you are on the chart. Boom, there's your salary. Well, if the base salary for a brand new teacher is 50,000. What happens to the teachers with like 20 years of experience and a master's degree? 
Well, theoretically, they should be paid way more, but that means the district has to cover that additional cost. And for smaller school districts, they don't have the sort of money to pull that off. Even larger school districts with a lot of experienced, educated teachers don't have that kind of money, and the state's not helping them get that kind of money, which means a lot of teachers who have a lot, it's that law, the $50,000 minimum salary is great if you're a new teacher with a bachelor's degree. If you're, if you have two masters and you've been teaching for 25 years, you're going to probably look to move to another school district. So even though it sounds good on paper, it's actually pushing some of the best educators who aren't getting paid what they are worth out of the district if they can afford to leave. So like this bill is just messed up for a bunch of reasons. There was actually a Democratic candidate for office in Arkansas. He's running for the state house. He tweeted uh, this. Uh, few, less than 5% of students receiving the new vouchers previously attended a public school, as I said. As other states have shown, we will continue to see the voucher program become an expensive subsidy for wealthier families at the expense of everyone else. And I think he's right. And I think that's the problem. The wealthier families are going to be just fine. And the ones who need a good, strong public school in their community are going to see the amount of resources that school has level off. And that's what Sarah Huckabee Sanders and the Republicans in Arkansas are doing. And by the way, this should go without saying, but I feel I'm going to say it anyway. A lot of these private religious schools, by definition, indoctrinate children. They teach, they might teach lies about science and evolution and climate change, which we'll talk about later. The lie about history and like the supposed Christian origins of our country. Like those schools are not necessarily held accountable for what students learn as long as they exist, you know. By the way, the schools participating in this EFA program don't even have to be accredited this year. So like, what the hell are they teaching students? We just don't know. And while the state has to be transparent about where the funding is going, which is why we got that copy of the report, the schools do not have to be transparent about how they are spending all that money, which shouldn't make anybody feel good about this stuff. I guess the one question that remains is, how do the voucher receiving students do academically compared to the students still in public schools. Like, are the voucher kids doing academically better? Because that might be that might be an argument in favor of them. It's too early to know that yet, because the program just started. But that is something worth keeping an eye on in years to come.